Hello! It's been a while since I have covered a Plex topic. I took uh, November to finish up my OBS course, and then December was kind of a month off. I, I, I still worked on the back end of things, but I did not spend as much time actually creating content. So this is, if you're unaware, if you're new to the channel, I do have a regular ongoing monthly sponsored Plex tutorial series. This is a sponsored video by Plex. Um, in which I cover various features and tools they put out and things like that. And in this video, we are talking about their brand new Plex Amp Media Player, which you can see right here, this tiny little thing. Now, it's not perfect, and I have a little bit of feedback, but I did want to cover it and point it out because I really think this is really cool, and I'm pretty excited to see where it goes kind of once they update it a bit. Um, it is definitely a work-in-project thing. This call This falls under their... Uh, passion projects for Plex Labs, which I will go ahead and pull up here. I've got a million different Plex Labs. Here we go. So, if you are a Plex Plus, Plus? Plex Pass subscriber, which if you're not, you can sign up via my affiliate links in the description down below, or if you want to gift someone a Plex Pass, or if you want to sign up for the free account, all available in the description below. If you're a Plex Pass subscriber, you get access to Plex Labs, which is Basically where they work on some side stuff, some really cool just side projects that integrate with Plex or otherwise add to the experience. So they've got community software, which I will be covering more in the future because I'm really excited for, and passion projects. And one such passion project is Plex Amp, which is a media player that's sort of supposed to be inspired by Winamp. Um, they've also got a webhooks thing to add certain features and notifications and things like that to your Plex server. And then the community software has some cool tools. Like I said, I'll be looking at in the future. Uh, in their article, they have a Medium article I'll have linked in the video description. They explain kind of the inspiration behind the software and so on. And like I said, they say it's inspired by Winamp, um, which is kind of cool. If you are unaware, I use Winamp as my primary music player. Now, I've just reinstalled Windows. I am on a new computer build. And so... Yeah, I don't even have uh, Winamp set up yet. So let me just go ahead, launch Winamp for audio CDs. I don't want to do that. Winamp. Winamp. It really whips the llama's ass. So this is Winamp. Uh, I'm having some trouble getting it to scale at the moment. Previously, the Big Bento theme scaled perfectly for me. It's not at the moment. I have a new skin I'll be using. But this is what I use and I have used as a media player since the Windows XP days. And then I kind of switched to iTunes for a while, and then as I migrated all of my media over the Plex for music specifically, since I keep a local library and stuff, I've been using Winamp just to relearn it and get back into it. Well, they have taken an inspiration and made Plexamp. Now, this is an Electron app. I know people have specific feelings one way or another about Electron apps. Eh. Uh, but it, it does some pretty cool stuff, and so I'll just give you an overview here of the features really, really fast. Um, works really great with the global media hotkeys, and so far it's worked great with my keyboard. Runs on Mac and Windows, um, like a native app, since it's Electron. Not Linux yet, which is weird since it's Electron, but hopefully soon Linux will be supported. Uh, can play directly play any media format, pretty much whatever, but it can also control, remotely control, other Plex media servers. And then in theory, those players and stuff can control that. It can control Plex Amp too. So if you have your TV over here set to play some music or something, you can use this to control it. They do have gapless playback for concert albums. I don't actually like gapless playback a lot of the time. Well, I, I'm okay with gapless playback. I don't like crossfading. Um, but this is specifically one song to the next, which is really cool because they mentioned like uh, live albums here like uh, or Pink Floyd's The Wall or <laughs> one 1,534 live Dave Matthews concert albums. I don't know about that, but there are a couple albums I listen to that when I listen in my car, there is a gap in between each song and the songs play into each other like the end of one song goes into the start of the next and it kind of ruins that immersion. So that's pretty cool. Soft transitions, this one is huge for me as someone who keeps speakers loud sometimes and things like that when you hit play and pause it doesn't just you know rush right into it it fades in and fades out so you don't get that like harsh just if you've ever just started playing a song in the middle of it or a video or something while your speakers are super loud you know what I'm talking about there's just like an oomph that comes that is very undesirable and then they have some really cool visualizers and so 
Here are some of the examples of the visualizers. They are quite attractive. They are quite nice, but not just visualizers. They actually have little waveform analyzers of uh, your music. And they say, uh, where is it at? If, if you end up getting a tattoo of it, let them know. I, I'm not into the whole tattoo scene necessarily, but I could see, you know, if I had a, a favorite track that wound up looking really cool, I could see, like, if I could get a vector of this, like, printing that as a wall or, like, getting that printed as, like, a wall art or something. Like, those look really, really cool. Uh, loudness, leveling, smart transitions. They've got a lot of cool uh, features. You can create uh, stations from your library based on... Uh, song things, or completely just randomize your, like, it, it, it creates a, basically a shuffle, but it influences it, in, wow, words, words are hard, influences it based on how often you've played a song, or how, or your previous listening history, your ratings, and so on, so kind of like how the Spotify, and iHeartRadio, and whatever music services create and Amazon Music Services create playlists based on what you have liked or shown or listened to the most. It'll do that. Or you can create an artist radio based on a single artist, which is pretty neat. There's a lot of features in here. I won't get to them all. You can read the article for yourself. When you install it, it will ask you to sign into your Plex account. And you will want to make sure it'll pop this up asking you to sign in. And you will want to make sure that your you have a Plex library running and that you can access it in your operating system. In Windows, for me, the easiest way to tell is when I'm in this PC. If I can see some Plex Media Server listings here in my network locations, I know that they're recognized. When I first turned on the program, uh, I had some trouble getting it to load my servers. Um, I have one running on my Synology NAS here. I've imported my music. I haven't made new playlists or anything because I have all of those in Winamp and I need to figure out how to import them over. So it's just like a raw list of raw metadata and I got, I got to clean it up a bit, but I did import my music so I could see it here. And then in your system tray icon for Plex amp, you can choose your source. So you can choose either Plex cloud or whatever local servers you have. So I have that set to that server. And then if you have another Plex player going, you can choose what you are controlling from here as well. Uh, then you can change the visualizer. There are so many, which is really cool. And we'll go through and look at some of them in a sec. You also have size control. Now, this is what I like and don't like about the app. Um, I think it's really cool. I personally am not into the whole minimalism scene, which is why I liked Winamp, was there was so much control. Like, the settings menus are deep and intense, and there's so much control and so much customizability. There is no skins for PlexAmp, and you get no, like, on-screen controls. You, they're, they're, you just have this one window, and you get to, like, search for and play music. Then you can control it via media keys. And you control the volume via your system volume. As someone who likes to listen to music while I do other things that I need to hear on my system, which is why I keep like the music program's volume low and so keep system volume at max, this is a problem for me. But, like I said, it is a work in progress and some people may really like that. Now, size-wise, you hit Nihilist, when which you don't see it at all, <laughs> which is kind of cool. Like, you just control it, you just tell it to play, and it goes and does its thing. And especially if you're controlling it from another Plex server or player anyway, that could be fine. Then you have Hipster, which makes it really, really tiny, which is good for small laptop screens. You've got Regular, which... Yeah, I don't know if these are adapting to Windows scaling, because even if I set it to Roo, which is supposed to be, like, the super big one, like, this is not all that big for me. Um... And I can't even seem to move the window around a lot of times. But like I said, it is a work in progress. But then you can start typing stuff in. So if I say at Doom's Gate, I believe, yep, then I can start playing the Doom soundtrack. And I can, it takes me to the album. I can start shuffling or I can just play that song. I can rate it. I can switch to the visualizer or lyrics. There, of course, aren't vi lyrics. Switch to visualizer, we get a nice little equalizer, or I can go over here and change the visualizer. That's the sound print. If I go to spectrum, we get a bigger one. Pretty cool. I love visualizers. I missed them when I was using other software. Ah, yes, the dots. The dots. Sick vape. Huh. It's like the, the uh, NCS music channel, how they have that little circle pulsating to the music. That's really cool. Do you even vape, bro? Freaky. Oh, that's neat. I'm just gonna go through all these real quick. Man, I miss 
like Windows XP era screensavers and visualizers and stuff. The early 2000s and the 90s for visualizers were so cool and they've like recreated this perfectly. Oh my god. I remember that one. Yes. This is so cool. Sorry, I'm like totally nerding out over here. Uh, not a fan of that one. Galaxy. <laughs> With some more color, that would be cool. Uh, it, pick, it can pick the color automatically based on the an album art once it's analyzed it, so that's pretty cool. Man. Amnesiac. Ooh, that one's trippy. Now, see what would be cool, especially as a minimalist thing, is if I could pop this up full screen on a monitor. That would be sick. Because um, I could see some setups where someone would want just like a full screen view of this. Um, and currently, we're limited to this. <laughs> Oh man, currently we're just limited to this little thing, but a full screen visualizer from this, which is like the minimal controls, would be pretty cool. That is sick. Not something I would use as a visualizer overall, but that renderer is pretty cool. Okay. And last one, waffles. Alright, I'm gonna go back to the... Was it Pulsar? Yeah, I'm gonna go to this one for right now. And I hit pause on here. Pauses it. That's cool. All right. As far as usage goes, of course, I am on a high end machine. So there's something to be said for that when it's actually playing the music and rendering the visualizer. Now, keep in mind, I'm recording too. You can see I'm using about 18% of my GPU for recording. And of course, there's some processor usage. But uh, Plex Amp itself here, not using hardly any CPU here, uses a little bit of memory. Uh, but for as far as like overall system usage goes, very lightweight as far as I can tell. So let's say you don't want to get that anymore, then I can search Tachyon Project right here, shuffle that album. It's going to fade out the previous one, switch on over, and boom. Oh, and that looks so cool with the new colors! I did not plan this out, I did not actually look, I specifically wanted to be like surprised by the visualizers because for whatever reason that's something that I just like totally geek out over. But that, ah, that makes me happy. I'm, I'm gonna have to just listen and stare to this for a little while when Premiere stops working because I've been fighting that on my new rig where Premiere just refuses to work. So this is PlexAmp, just wanted to show it off and show you some of the tools available to you. You can view your playlist view over here on the right, uh, like I said, you can Get pretty minimal control, but it's a pretty neat app regardless. Hey, I can move it around now. Cool. And that is it. So you can download it if you are a Plex Pass subscriber from the link in the video description or plex.tv slash plex dash labs. Uh, and like I said, I have affiliate links if you want to sign up for a free account or a paid plus Plex Pass subscription or if you want to gift one to someone. Links in the video description below. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Share it to someone if you think they'd enjoy Plex Amp. Let me know what's your favorite music player. Or if you still use Winamp like me, because you like... I was going to say Whipping the Llama's Ass, because that's what their little song thing that plays at the start of Winamp has always been. That's their little motto meme slogan thing. But that just sounds wrong. That just sounds so wrong to, for me to say like that. But if you like Winamp, or if, you know, Plexamp, or what your favorite media player is, comment down below. Subscribe for more awesome tech content, and I will see you in the next one. This video is sponsored by viewers like you. Our videos would not be possible without the generosity of those of you who contribute to one of our fan funding options, be it DonorBox, Twitch subscriptions, direct contributions via PayPal, or Patreon. To join our inner circle and get behind the scenes looks at videos, go to eposvox.com support to learn more, and join us on Discord at eposvox.com discord. Thanks.